see. Oh, yeah. oh my. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's sick, bro. Oh, this yeah. guy's smart, bro. This is something that I was honestly terrified at. Can I get you guys going back to back? Thank you guys so much for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Coffee done. Let's go. In the last year, I went to two different portrait workshops. Now, with those two that I have attended, I've honestly am now so much more comfortable with working with a model posing new people that I potentially could have as clients and most importantly I have learned so many different new skills because I have expanded my knowledge into a different genre altogether. And so I'm going to share with you in this video five different things that I have learned from those two days and possibly you can put it towards your own workflow when you're working with your clients. All right, let's get straight into it. The first thing that is absolutely crucial that I think every photographer should do for any sort of client work, to be honest, is to mood board. Now, the organizers of these events had locations scouted and have done an entire route basically planned out for us and they they set out a few challenges for us to take photos of the models and the person who wins gets a certain prize. Essentially what they've done is they had created a mood board beforehand of different shots that they would like the photographers and also themselves to take and also location scouted where those shots would be able to be taken. This is what mood boarding is, right? You usually open up a Pinterest tab or you open up a Word document or even scribble down some drawings on a piece of paper and just visualize your ideas and put them on a piece of paper to kind of understand what you're trying to look for. And the best part about this as well is that you can obviously share this with your client that you're working on. They can be also part of the creative process and that way you can alter your mood board and how the day will go in a more strategic manner for the person that you're working with. Most importantly of all, when you're actually out on location, then you don't have to really think about things that you need to do. Or if you do mind blank, for example, and you don't know what type of shot that you want, you can reference a Pinterest tab, for example, and see that this portrait looks really cool and I would like to try and imitate this and you communicate that with your model as well. And then they'll be on board with it. They can have a visual reference to know how to pose potentially and you also have a visual reference on how to expose the image, composition, angles, and how to pose that other person if they're not as experienced as what you would normally expect. My coffee is ready, so let's go back onto the couch and I'll continue on with the rest to the point. So, as I was saying, mood boards, they really make you look professional as well when you're out on the shoot. Something that is overlooked is usually the equipment that you bring on to location. That can really make a difference to your own workflow, how you present yourself to the client, and also the types of shots that you can end up getting at the end of the day. This is something that I learned when I was on the day. I didn't realize you need a diffuser or a reflector. Diffusers mainly if you're going to be shooting out in harsh sun and I'll explain there were 30 of us literally 30 of us photographers of all different experiences but we all knew what we were going to be doing and only one of us brought a diffuser on a portrait workshop so if you don't know what a diffuser is it's essentially what this big light here is doing it's diffusing all the light so that it hits softly on the skin. Now, when you put it in front of the sun, essentially it just softens all the light and it makes it very nice and appealing when you go take photos. And I'll show you some before and afters as well of what it looks like when you don't have a diffuser. And don't get me wrong, photos without a diffuser and harsh light, there's a purpose there. Like if you wanna get high contrast or if you shoot in black and white, for example, and you need those like harsh shadows, it kind of works. It can actually work in your favor to be fair. And I'll show you a few of those photos that I mean. A diffuser really changes a lot of things. And then on top of that, usually they'll have a sleeve that you can go over the diffuser that actually as a reflector. Now reflectors are great because they can bounce light to your subject and be able to fill in the shadows and balance out the exposure so that you can also come up with a different look. Coffee done. Let's go. This is my script. Don't need to see that. I brought three lenses. The Sigma 105 1.4, which is an extreme telephoto lens, 35mm 1.4, and an 85mm 1.8. It really doesn't matter what type of lens you use. It does definitely go by personal preference. I prefer 
telephoto, they are really great dramatic lenses. I find that the photos that come out of those are just really cool and inspiring to see. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's because it's like you're sniping away and you can really single out a subject from a distance, or maybe it's the extreme depth of field that you can really achieve with these lenses. I just really like the look of it. What I really love also is a wide angle. I prefer a 35 mil. Now wide lenses in portrait photography is really good with establishing a scene, putting that subject in that scene or environment, and it allows to tell a story. Now the fourth thing that I learned on these days is actually something incredibly crucial that I really looked over. It's the fact that you really need to get to know your model. I know it kind of sounds a little strange to, to hear because obviously, you know, you're going to have to talk to them and figure out, you know, who they are and such. I, I feel like establishing a connection, making a mental effort to break the ice early, to get to know them on a very casual setting and a friendship setting rather than a professional work setting allows them to really come out of their shell and be more comfortable with you. So you have to put yourself in their shoes, right? Like you're a guy or a girl that have just met this person essentially with a professional camera and probably a bigger professional lens as well and you're pointing it at their face. Now you as a photographer, I know that you're rarely in front of the lens. I have at times, I'm sure you've probably experienced it once or twice if you've got photographer friends, but it, it makes you uncomfortable, right? And you only really start to come out of your shell after you know the person who's pointing that camera in your face or you do it long enough and you start to feel more comfortable about your poses or the fact that there's a camera in your face, right? Really aim to break the ice and just get to know them. Get to know their good poses, their bad poses, like what they like to do, what they creatively like to do as well. Because I find most models are creatives. They either shoot with their own cameras. Really, I think the art of modeling, in a sense, is pretty creative, right? Like you have to understand your good side. You have to understand how to pose, how to angle yourself. So they have a creative vision as well for what the photos they would like to come out of that day. Keeping them involved as well is a really good part of the process and then you can make friends with them. It becomes more fun, more relaxed. You don't want to be all very stiff and take photos of people and tell them, yeah, look this way, look that way and they have to awkwardly do that doesn't work. You gotta be relaxed, right? And this brings me to my last point. It's poses. This is something that I was honestly terrified at because I myself kind of lack the confidence to be able to direct someone for posing. And it's simply because of inexperience. Through the experience of these two portrait workshops and also editing the photos, I have come up with many different new ideas now of what good poses are for both men and women. So one point that I kind of learned is that obviously I worked with very experienced models. Now they know what they're doing. They will hear the camera shutter click and then they can change their pose. Or if you just give them a slight vision of what you would like to achieve, they'll know exactly what to do. And through observing how these models work and how they move in their environment and try and match the vision that you have as a photographer, I'm understanding that they're really just trying to convey emotion. That's really what it comes down to. That's what really as a photographer when you need to speak to an inexperienced model is what you need to achieve is you need to paint the picture for them and get them to convey a certain emotion that you would like to capture in your photo. And this is all done in body language and you need to be able to coach someone and let them know exactly what type of pose that you might need or type of look that you might need to convey the certain emotion that you need. Talking with your model beforehand and really getting to know them and making them very comfortable with you is so crucial because you can't tell someone, for example, to stare into the lens, tell them that you love me with your eyes and not your mouth really is kind of awkward to ask, right? That is actually a hack that I found and what I've learned. Uh, I was speaking with one of the models, uh, just kind of asking like, how do you stare at the lens in the way that you do and have such a very good fierce look about you? He basically said, I really am talking to the lens of the camera and I'm saying something. Modeling, I'm starting to understand, is very much like acting, right? He would look into the lens and he would be thinking like love for example, and then through him thinking about love, his eyes and his body language and the micro expressions in his face 
convey the love type of, I don't know why I did that, but like a love type of expression. Or if you're like being serious, or if you're being angry or happy or whatever it is, thinking about it and saying it and like projecting your thought into the lens is how these experience models do it. So as a photographer, that's what I started to adopt. I'm really enjoying it now. I'm feeling very confident. I feel like I'm really able to step out of my comfort zone and really try some cool different photos and just level up completely. So if you guys have enjoyed everything that I've talked about, let me know down below. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.